What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel and some more Hail Caesar coverage here as we're moving through the factions. So we got another interesting one here today, which gives you some uh, flexibility in the list. Uh, you can, again, go all, or not necessarily all, but heavy cavalry or heavy infantry or create a great balance here. So, And another one that is not necessarily on the top of everybody's radar as far as wargaming options and periods here. But the Avars, so basically think uh, Central Asia originated in Central Asia, but sort of more also based in the sort of Central European plane. Um, but again, as far as the gaming part goes here, so again, some interesting options with the army. So anything roughly 6th century through 9th century is here. So cavalry have to be at least 25%. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so cavalry have to be at least 25% of the army and avar heavy or cataphract cavalry have to you have to have at least one unit of those and really considering that they're pretty damn good in general why would you not have more than one right you also have to have at least one unit of avar horse archers so this is one where you know we've seen um again, a lot of armies with different requirements but here you specifically have to have at least one of two different units so that's um, not all that common and then infantry does also have to be at least a quarter percent again excluding skirmishers and on the infantry side, we also have a special requirement. So Slav spearmen have to be 25% of the infantry itself. So 25% of whatever overall army percent you do decide to go with. So again, interesting army in that you can go balanced or you know lean a little bit more into the cavalry or the infantry as, as you wish and play around with that quite a bit. Divisions are pretty standard here. And then on this one, though, skirmishers can be up to 50% of the infantry per division so when we pull into the list here it's not uh, i'd say you know about a medium-sized list so again we get some pretty spicy options here so the avar heavy cavalry just pretty much bog standard heavy cavalry for the most part although we can put some upgrades in so we start off with 32 base points here and then we can go pay one point to go to cataphracts and then we can customize those even further again points are going to creep up though so we can give the heavy or the cataphract cavalry contos and bows, which at that point is, again, you're kind of creating just an all-in-one unit that can do basically everything. doesn't have any special abilities yet, but still heavy cavalry and still can deal that range damage. So it can be, um, you don't have to load up on other archer units necessarily. You have everything here uh, and have a lot more tactical flexibility with that. And then one final upgrade. So if we re really went all out, so, you know, all the upgrades, basically 37 points, but we're getting a lot there, right? So we could have cataphracts that also have contos and bows. And now with this last upgrade, fierce fighters. And there's no other restrictions there. So read that carefully. We can have an all fierce fighter, heavy cavalry, uh, uh, just wave of units here. And that, that's going to be pretty nasty to deal with, right? Those can definitely punch. We can also get uh, just a little bit cheaper Bulgar Heavy Cavalry armed with spears and bows. Again, just starting back at that base 32-point value. So, you know, if you want to mix it up a little bit just for flavor's sake, but also, again, just keeping things pretty, pretty, pretty simple there. But really, whether they're Avar or Bulgar doesn't necessarily matter, except, again, that you do have to have at least Avar Cavalry, so at least one unit. So, and given all the upgrade paths, you might as well for the most part, stick with that unless you specifically really wanted the Bulgars in there. And we do have a medium cavalry option here. Again, just plain Jane, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. So Gepid, medium cavalry with spears and or javelins. So again, if you want a couple of discounted units, if you're really going all in on the Avars above, not a bad option. And then we also have, again, this is one of our requirement units, Avar or Bulgar. Again, you might as well run the Avar version because you're required. Uh, light cavalry armed with spears and or javelins and bows fielded as small units so again of our horse archers um actually sorry that the horse archers is the separate unit there is the requirement so here which is which is a little bit interesting so i guess uh, they're both small units well i guess we get two different abilities so now the light cavalry again are going to punch slightly better if they have to fight in that first turn so a uh, clash of five but again having bows and or javelins again and here we get feigned flight so even though the horse archer one is the requirement unit and a parthian shot is nothing to sneeze at we'll get to that in a second but certainly worth loading up on some of those 
light cavalry units because of vein flight. And again, no other restriction there aside from the army restriction. So really you can have multiple units of this and not really get taxed. Then to follow up of our horse archers field of small units, again, that's perfectly fine. And you get Parthian shot and a two point discount because they're really super squishy, right? So, and again, you, you don't want these guys in close combat. You want them doing their, their shooty thing. So really the cavalry package so far of this list is phenomenal, right? If you want nothing but units with special abilities, you really can go that route. So if you want to go super elite, uh, sort of the, the, the sledgehammer, go load up on the cavalry, of our heavy cavalry with all the upgrades. Support that with all kinds of horse archer units and light cavalry units, get feigned flight, fool people into bad maneuvers, get them set up for the heavy cavalry to hit home and constantly annoy people with the horse archers doing their thing all the while. And really all of them can be shooting too. That's the just the, the frankly pretty damn frightening part here. So you know you got bows on the heavy cavalry, bows, bows, and bows all over. So very, very nasty stuff. Now the medium infantry is a little bit more generic, but do keep in mind we have to have at least that one unit, right? So we have Slavic medium infantry with spears and or javelins. Again, just generic medium unit. Although we have an interesting variation of that, and it's listed as a separate unit, but we can go medium infantry with double-handed axes for a little bit more punch. As you can see, the clash goes up there, and for one extra point, worth considering. There's no other restrictions on that. And again, we do have to have Slav spearmen, though, as 25% or more of the infantry, so just keep that in mind. But getting some of these guys with the double-handed axes in there pretty spicy. Now, if you want even more pew pew in the list, we have just light infantry archers, normal size unit. This isn't small unit stuff. Um, still that light infantry stat line, so they, they can throw a few uh, dice in combat if needed, but probably not a good idea for them to be there in the first place, but it does give you the only uh, long range value of three for the whole list. So you have that extra little bit of dice to, again, put hopefully some wounds uh, and damage on enemy units. And then our just very sort of standard skirmisher package here, you got the javelin small unit and then the bows skirmisher small unit thing too. So for just all kinds of shooty goodness. So really this whole list um, is kind of like a, almost a sleeper powerhouse here. Again, you have not necessarily the best of the best heavy cavalry, but not not uh, not terrible by any stretch of the imagination, and you know sort of sort of in the upper tier certainly, and especially with the, the customization options here, with also the lack of limits that you typically see in other lists. Uh, again, you can just go all out on the Avar heavy cavalry, and as long as you get the points, why would you not take advantage of all of those things? Again, we'll reiterate one last time. A cataphract unit with contos and bows and is a fierce fighter as well that is some scary stuff coming your way if they get that charge off boys and girls you don't necessarily need the bulgar heavy cavalry they're just again the generic version of the generic uh generic alternative to the generic of our heavy cavalry above but why would you limit yourself the Gepid medium cavalry again if you need a discount unit, but really I think I would go just myself load up on all the heavy cavalry as above, bring in whatever amounts of the light cavalry and horse archers as needed to just be obnoxious with that and use them to just harass and annoy the hell out of enemies, get them out of position, and let the heavy cavalry do its thing. All the while backing that up with some decent amounts of the infantry. Again, I love tr trying to test out that double-handed axes unit as much as possible. But again, we do have to have at least a quarter of the infantry have to be the spearmen. So, but no other upgrades there, so no reason to go overboard either. But the rest of the infantry, really, I would just fill out with the light archer units for the most part and some of the double-handed axe guys. And then just, you know, as many skirmishers as you can afford. Again, tons of bow fire in this list at pretty much everything that fights or is going to be fighting close combat can shoot except for the medium infantry and really they should just be sort of second line um backup anyway the heavy lifting is going to be done by that heavy cavalry and to top it all off here at the end finally a leadership eight general and commanders division commanders so standard stuff there um so just list should run just fine as long as you're not being 
uh, silly with your commands and should hopefully be able to hit home. This probably wouldn't be all that great, of course, with Leadership 7, but also no reason to see a Leadership 9 character in here. That would just, I think, be really obnoxious and really get to the point of making this kind of overpowered. So not the longest list by any means, but doesn't need it. And again, probably its big shtick here is that you have, as long as you're meeting the army requirements, which are super easy, um, you get access to three really good special abilities and whatever quantity you can afford for the game you're playing. So good stuff here, guys. Let us know in the comments if you've tried out the Avars or played against them and how that has gone for you and what type or style of list you've either played or encountered. So hit us up in the comments there, guys. Like and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, please. Thanks so much for checking these out, and we'll be back with some more Hail Caesar for you soon. Take care.